Matthew chapter 7 verse 6 Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. God's answers for your life, growing in Christ, and how to control your tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And that was from Proverbs 18, verse 21. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. And that was from Ephesians 4, verse 29, and verses 31 and 32. Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and health to the bones. Proverbs 16, verse 24. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. Proverbs 13, verse 3. A good man out of a good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. And that was from Luke chapter 6 verse 45 uh, and we go on here but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment and that was from Matthew 12 verse 36 sing unto him sing psalms unto him talk ye of all his wondrous works that's from uh, first chronicles 16 verse 9 Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue, keepeth his soul from troubles. Proverbs 21, verse 23. Be not a witness against thy neighbor without cause, and deceive not with thy lips. That was from Proverbs 24, verse 28. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called which some professing have erred concerning the faith grace be with thee amen and that was uh, from first timothy chapter 6 verses 20 and 21 but avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law for they are unprofitable and vain that came from Titus, uh, chapter 3, verse 9. All the while my breath is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils, my lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. That's from Job, chapter 27, uh, verses 3 and 4. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. Job chapter 2 verse 10. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. 1 Peter Chapter 3, verse 10. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. And that was from 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 15. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. And that was from First Peter chapter 2, verse 23. 
from Proverbs 15, verse 4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness within is a breach of the spirit or in the spirit. Uh, here's one, Proverbs 18, verse 7 through 8. A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. The words of a talebearer are, are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. This next one is from James uh, 3, verse 6 and verses 10 through 11. And a tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is a tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body. And set the fire on fire the course of nature, and is set on fire of hell. Out of the same mouth proceed blessings and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not be to not these things ought not so to be. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? And also from uh, James uh, chapter one verse twenty six. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridles not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. From Psalm 17, verse 4. Concerning the works of men, by the word of thy lips, I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. The lip of truth shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. And that was taken out of uh, Proverbs 12, verses 18 through 19. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. Psalm 141, verse 3. And another one here from Proverbs uh, 20, verse 15. There is gold and a multitude of rubies, but the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. And then finally here, uh, Psalm 50, verse 23. Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, and to him that ordereth his conversation aright will I show the salvation of God. Hello YouTubers and friends, uh, this is another edition of uh, Supernatural Oddities. This is uh, Vlog Part 10, Don't Feed the Animals. Well anyways, you know, just uh, before we start getting into some of this here uh, material, I just thought I'd uh, kind of do a little bit of rambling here first and uh, or <laughs> about what I was kind of pondering the other day and I was thinking about maybe I should uh, start a a new different little section here calling uh, Rogers uh, Ramble uh, and uh, anyways you know kind of uh, fashion after uh, Kanita's Ramble but anyways that was just kind of a, a thought I was kind of uh, toying with at the time but uh, moving on uh, before we get uh, uh, started with some of this here material I wanna do a quick little shout out to Randy from uh, Hell of a Deal Productions. I hope I got his uh, got that correct. And anyways, uh, I don't know if you've watched any of his videos, but he did have a video that came out about a week or so ago uh, dealing with some um, trolls and uh, cyber stalkers. And I can't uh, remember what these here trolls or cyber stalkers uh, call themselves something about the stop team or the YouTube stop team or something like that but uh, Randy did uh, quite a uh, nice little uh, professional video about it and uh, lots of cool comments about it uh, of course they did come back and uh, throw on a lot of uh, vulgar stuff which is uh, pretty nasty but basically uh, that still kind of goes back to about you know what was uh, I just read to you out of uh, God's uh, answers for your life but uh, I just uh, okay so I think uh, and uh, yeah, great there Randy you did a heck of a job thanks a lot 
and I'll uh, put a, a link to uh, Randy's um, video down in the bottom there in the description but anyways what I wanted to address here and it's uh, something that uh, Zef Daniel brought up about a year ago when he was on uh, vacation and on this road trip but he had mentioned the fact that uh, don't feed the animals and that is so true because uh, what I've been uh, getting a picture of or a glimpse of from uh, various uh, astute individuals and uh, some of these people are really uh, quite prophetic is that we're uh, getting to the point where we're entering a very dangerous time and in this time it's uh, you guys are going to have to really watch what you say and what you write what you uh, post here and there because uh, along with the fact that the Holy Spirit is starting to uh, move in a big way as what Brother Thomas has said and is starting to you know, uh, fill up and uh, starting to change people at the same time what's going to be happening as a counterbalance the uh, the evil side their, their uh, attacks and their evil and the things that they do is going to also increase but uh, if you have really good faith and I mean real faith and uh, and believe that you're going to be uh, protected uh, you'll be okay so uh, it's not to fret or to worry and to take one day at a time here but uh, <laughs> you know something you know to think about as far as with with this increasing evil and uh, how you sh should be aware and alert you know, I want to kind of do a little historical uh, uh, discussion here. I don't know if uh, many of you or or how many or have ever seen that movie 300. I think that's what it was called. But if I'm uh, correct, they probably fashioned that off or after uh, the story about Gideon's army. And here was what Gideon's army was... Um, from let's say what was it 10,000 uh, volunteers 1,000 volunteers 5,000 I think it was something like 10,000 volunteers he was able to uh, weed them all out down to a specific of number of 300 which he used in his uh, battle and to fight you know I, I don't know what what army or group that they were fighting but he started winning and all of a sudden when the people realized this all of a sudden you know they came to his aid and stuff like that but what he did he observed he kept a very keen eye on you know the ones that were uh, that he selected and how he did this he watched to see when people were tired and thirsty and when they come to a river how they approached the water and uh, how they drank now the ones that came up and just just dunked their heads into the water uh, he just uh, more or less dismissed them but he watched the ones who would just kneel down and keep an eye on the perimeter and would cup the water and bring it up to his to their mouth so uh, he got rid of the so it was just like that so the ones that were alert so that's uh, pretty much you know the thing there and what you must keep in mind is uh, is this here statement and keep this uh, and think about this really carefully that uh, keep one eye on your enemies but keep two eyes on your alleged friends because it's usually your friends that or your close uh, or people or I guess your alleged friends that you think that are your friends are the ones that probably are going to betray you in one way or another and we'll uh, we'll get into that as uh, as this here little uh, ramble progresses but the, you know the point is um, there's people that are going to come up to you and ask you a question here or there you know just some something mundane and uh, 
you don't need they don't need to uh, know your business and that's part of don't feed the animals because when you give out information they kind of log that and keep track and it all comes back to some kind of central uh, agency or, or something of some kind and uh, just to let you know there's a lot of stuff that you know I won't bring up here or share or whatever because I know the enemy is out there and my my uh, stalkers and my enemies come here and uh, listen quite uh, intently to find out what they want to uh, see that they can find or use you know as an example I remember a time be a time ago uh, Zeff talked about a certain topic and brought up something and that's and uh, he had used some concepts in there and it wasn't long after that that you know I happened to, you know somebody came by and was kind of talking in the background where I was at and uh, discussing that same type of uh, uh, scenario or whatever and I thought yeah yeah you know all you're really doing is showing me what side of the fence you're on so you know it doesn't do anything and and I just want to let let, the, let these evil creeps that uh, come and uh, listen to this your stuff let you know that yeah I know who you are and I don't really uh, going to give you any of my time because you know you're you're not going to be in my head but I know that I'm in your head and that's all you can think about and I think what you really need to do is just go away and find a lot, find life and uh, and do something, do something productive instead of going around and attacking people. But yes, these uh, these people uh, don't need to know your stuff or or, or your business and uh, and also you know keep this here in mind that. You have absolutely no obligation to share anything with uh, with others, and especially the worlders that want to turn around and, like they say, take that information and rend you with it. Because there's a uh, despises and and uh, snitches. They're all over the places. Uh, there's a whole army of monitors just going around because they don't have anything better to do, and they think that they'll uh, get an extra crumb or two just by doing this uh being involved in this kind of behavior and uh <laughs> yeah it'll be just uh that they'll find out as time goes by that you know the people that uh they're trying to uh the people whose boots they're licking are going to end up turning around and stomping them in the end anyways but they don't understand or realize that at this point they're, they're pretty smug and uh and think that they're uh getting by with something but just to move on here with a little bit of uh, information about how uh, intelligence gathering is done. And this is how they do it. This is the way the military does it. It's no big secret. Uh, what they'll do is they'll send out five, six, seven different people. And at uh, different times there they're assigned each let's say each one of these five or six seven people are assigned a different question to go around and ask different people something and so what they do they'll ask a certain question that's different from you know their other uh, cohorts that are going out and they'll uh, more or less uh, record what was uh, the responses and then they'll bring that information back to a central uh, command site or somebody that does the processing that's able to put all that different information from the different questions or whatever together and create a profile or, or uh, yeah yeah profile or I'm th trying to think of the another word for a dossier whether it's a dossier being gathered on a specific person or a dossier on a group of people or some other unit so that's how it goes about 
and you know these people are pretty sly and slick about it because like remember going back to uh, what I said about keeping an eye on your enemies but keep two eyes on your alleged friends well I'm going to give you an example it probably wasn't so long ago half a year maybe uh, a little longer about last yeah probably about six months ago uh, I was approached by somebody that you know I haven't seen in a very very long time and they just out of the blue kind of asked me well about a certain person and where they lived and I said well yeah they were out there for a while and now they're over here working there and you know I said well why do you want to know and they just simply said uh, well you know his his name came up on uh, on the email list and I thought well you know why would this person care well the next day or a couple days later I ran across this person and they wouldn't even talk to me yeah and and I could see right in their eyes in their facial expression guilt that they've been uh, the uh, the yep yep that's right I got suckered into revealing you know this person where he works well what happens was um, you know I you know I'd keep in pretty good, close contact with this guy and all of a sudden boof you know no more emails didn't get anything back from him uh, he must have changed his email address one way or another uh, that uh, relationship was destroyed by these here sorry as uh, uh, trolls and uh, stalkers so that's uh, pretty much uh, you know how the intelligence gathering is you know and with this here uh, gang stalking the number one thing they want to or part of their program is destroying all relationships that you have so remember like I said it's always important to listen up when I say something about keep an eye on your enemies but keep two eyes on your alleged friends yep you know the betrayals are the, it's, uh, by your friends is uh, is where most of it comes from because you know these guys are very clever and uh, They do it where it looks really kind of innocent, but it's not. And then finally, in closing, um, Zeph had uh, also had mentioned about a year ago in, it, in his, one of his discussions, and he recently brought up this here uh, point, in fact, again. The rise of the psychiatrists. Yep, yep, that's right. The rise of the psychiatrists because they're going to be be used more and more as time goes by as far as trying to label anybody that's uh especially you people out there that uh, are uh, targeted individuals they are going to use the psychiatrists to uh label you you know they're trying to you know tag something on you like you're paranoid or uh, delusional and blah 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 this or that but also you know this uh th they use this dsm4 it's kind of their <coughs> their bible excuse me here let me have a, another quick little drink of some pop here okay but yeah the, the rise of the psychiatrists yeah that's an industry that you're going to see like like what uh, Zeph predicted is going to really start to come into the forefront because this is what one of the really big tactics that the gang stalkers like to use you know discredit people and so uh, make 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 you uh, turn around and make you look like crazy and and basically what it comes down to what they're doing when they send you to a psychologist they want to uh, re-victimize you and uh, re-traumatize you and uh, and that's that's it and then they turn around and spread uh, spread rumors throughout the uh, the community that yeah uh, that you're crazy but you're not you know it's 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 the system and here's the thing that you got to take a look at this is uh 
to something that the communists, especially in communist Russia, used extensively. You know, psychiatrists just to, uh, so they can uh, isolate a person from their family, isolate them from the community, isolate them from their whoever, all their associates, you know, and that's, 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 uh, yeah, and that's the thing, it's a lot of, put, you know, way too many people put a lot of uh, confidence and thought and uh, trust in somebody that's got, what, a PhD or, or an MD behind their name and stuff like that, but you have to, uh, because, you know, they're considered an expert. You know they've been considered they've been vetted by the system so uh if they say something about somebody oh gosh it's got to be true so yeah you know you're gonna have to uh be very careful about uh analyzing uh anything that's being uh you know said or written and uh and to use some logic and uh figure out what's the meaning between the written lines but you know the bottom line is uh, we're coming into a period where uh, the evil's going to really ramp up. And the main thing is you're going to have to think about this here and be very careful in what you uh, say and what you write and uh, and the signals that you put out. But, uh, but you know what the thing is, is faith. If you really, really have your faith there, uh, you're going to be protected. And who knows, maybe you'll have to go through some more trials and some, uh, in order to finally come to that point because, uh, yeah, God will, you know, you know, God, God will chastise and he'll break his own in order for them to wake up and, uh, and to start relying on him. And that's what uh, God wants. That's what the Lord wants. He wants you to rely on him and not on on uh, the worlders. So be very careful and wary of the worlders. And uh, that's pretty much my ramble for this here. Uh, have a uh, very good day in the Lord, uh, a good evening, and a good afternoon. And uh, many blessings to all of you. And thanks for taking the time to listen to my uh, ramble here. Peace be with you all.